Tonight on Let It Rip, are toll roads the answer to fixing the roads? It's an option, but I don't know how many people will be receptive to it. I think it'll be a lot of pushback. A recent study shows they could bring in big bucks for the roads, but would you be willing to trade in your free pass for an easy pass? The road to a fix is riddled with controversy. We dig in, but first. The state of our state is strong and ready to go. A new legislature, a bold agenda, and a call for unity. But will Governor Whitmer's ideas bring us together or push us further apart? And are they right for Michigan? Our panel's reacting to the hot topics from last night's State of the State. Time now to let it rip. The governor gave us a lot to talk about last night. Who actually better to break it all down than our panel? Joining me now, Democratic insider and consultant Alexis Wiley and Republican insider Rocky Ruchkowski. And as always, Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton. We begin with one of the big hot button issues that Governor Whitmer was talking about, abortion. Voters approved a measure legalizing abortion in our state, but Governor Whitmer wants to take it a step further, saying that 1931 law banning the procedure should be repealed and she doesn't want to stop there. Take a listen. Let's repeal other dangerous laws prohibiting people from accessing reproductive health care or shaming them for seeking in the first place. Let's repeal outdated laws restricting who you can marry. Let's expand the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act so you can't be fired or evicted for who you are or how you identify or who you love. That's your business. All right, and so that was one of the hot button issues that she talked about, among other things. We're going to be hitting on some of those other issues, but we begin with Rocky with that one. Outdated laws in the state of Michigan. The governor was also quoted as saying that if you have outdated laws in any state, you're going to detract business and detract people from coming in because no one wants to do business in a state that's considered backwards. Do you agree? Yes and no. Do you, should you do away with outdated laws? Of course you should. But we've already, the state of Michigan put the abortion issue into the Constitution. So this is more, again, pandering to her position, her political position. I think that she wants it to go a step further, and she's asking the legislature to help out with that. Yeah, but it's in the Constitution. So when, when it's once in the Constitution, the legislature doesn't have to make any more laws because it's in the Constitution. It's enshrined in the Constitution. To do away with arcane laws, absolutely. We used to do that 20 years ago. Republicans did that. Rick Snyder actually started a, a committee that was looking for outdated laws and to eliminate them. You're talking so, about the Elliott Larson law, saying that, hey, we have to, we have to do more with uh, this. Alexis, when you hear that, you're waving your head up and down. Yes, we should, you say. We absolutely should, because we should should make sure that Michigan is a place that protects reproductive freedom and also where people aren't discriminated against. No one wants to live in a state where they feel like their rights are going to be infringed upon. And that's what the governor's trying to do. I think it makes sense that she did that. And I think that it's, it makes sense that she talked about it in the state of the state, but didn't focus mostly on those issues. She really focused, no, I think a she lot focused on, on that it. people <laughs> were most concerned with. And this is also like a real problem that I think she's going after so I fully support how do you legislate this further and you're asking this legislature to do more to help attract people to make this more of an equitable place for everybody where everybody feels like they have an even shot how do you do that Charlie because the governor is very strategic here this was a very hot button issue in the election it got her elected arguably <laughs> but let's take a look at it. this is a very slim Democratic majority there are only two seats in the house two yeah. seats in the Senate and you've got That's to get 100 percent right. of your vote so what is she doing? She's taking the abortion issue, for example, but she's turning it around and making it an economic issue. Come to Michigan. Which, which is ridiculous. Which, Ohio, which is completely which ridiculous. Is a great strategy for No, it's her. not a strategy. It's, it's a ridiculous. It's something that Republicans It's disgusting yeah. and ridiculous. Oh, God, Rocky, it's hold on one second. Why, Rocky, why is it ridiculous to try to expand things like the Elliott Larson Act to make it more welcoming actually forget about Elliot Larson for a second let's talk forget about abortion about no no, no let's talk about uh, the let's address the issue why I said it was ridiculous you're making abortion an economic development issue are you kidding me? Yes. She was talking about helping our children when we're killing our children. Yeah, it's in our constitution. But more importantly, lot, hold on one second. More importantly, there are a lot of companies. You know what? That will give rights. Uh, there are a lot of companies that'd be more than happy to come here if we made it a tax. I, I, I all right, hold on. A better on. tax Alexis, environment. Alexis, how, how how do you think? Come on. That this is an economic development issue. 
talking about abortion at a state of the state address? Because it determines whether you want to live in this state. You if you believe that your rights are going to be infringed, infringed upon okay. the rights of your, your daughters, your children, your family, you don't want to live there. So people are making decisions based on whether it's a welcoming state, and Michigan is a welcoming let me, state. Let me just and address that for a second. And I think her doubling you, down on that is really Let me, do let me address do that for really a second. Do you think that Michigan is considered outside of the state of Michigan as a welcoming state right now, or do you think a lot more needs to be done? If I lived in Ohio, I would feel like it was welcome. Well, if I sure. lived uh, in you know Indiana, what, I would feel like it was welcome. That's a ridiculous state. If you lived in California, would you think it, that Michigan it, is a place I, to go? I, I think that it all depends. I think California is welcoming, but I also think Michigan is. Let me, and I think this governor is really very focused on making sure that we as a state are competitive with the rest of the nation. Okay, that's a that's a ridiculous that statement. Live, why is that a ridiculous statement? Let me tell you why that's a ridiculous statement. Michigan has lost over 400,000 people. 400,000 people have moved out of Michigan to other states. Guess where they've moved to? Ohio, Florida, Texas. By the way, these are Republican states. These are red states. You have seen people out of California, and New York, not just Republicans, Democrats too. You're seeing population loss in Michigan. We have two million less people than Ohio does. When was that ever recorded? Listen, the, the one thing that she did talk about that some Republicans actually applauded quietly, although I talked to them on the phone, this $13 billion worth of economic development that some people call corporate welfare, but others say attracts business. We'll talk about that in a moment. But another controversial issue that was talked about had a lot to do that with guns. She wants lawmakers to pass universal background checks, safe <laughs> storage laws, and extreme risk protections to keep those guns away from people who might harm themselves or hurt other people. You know, Whitmer actually called out the previous legislature for not taking action on the issue. Take a listen. Despite pleas from Oxford families, these issues never even got a hearing in the last legislature. This year, let's change that. Let's work together to stop the violence and to save lives. And I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about law-abiding citizens. Hunters and responsible gun owners from both sides of the aisle know we need to get these common sense safety proposals across the finish line. All right, let's talk about this. Um, universal background checks, yes or no, Rocky? We already have them. We, but she's we saying, already have we them have in federal law. She's saying. We have what, to do what, more. what I'd like to know is right? what, what are, uh, what, again, she lays out all these proposals and no details. But what are the details? This is a state of state address. But, uh, a yeah, it's a state of state address where she uses Oxford, the, the, the individuals that were killed and murdered in Oxford and the crimes that were committed in Oxford to basically make her point. Well, let me tell you, all of the things that she said about safe gun laws uh, and, and safe or locking your weapon safely and so forth, all those were broken in Oxford. 46 laws were broken in Oxford. Let me ask How does that protect oh, oh, kids? Yeah, yeah. If you really want to talk, hold on one second. If you really want to talk about protecting your kids, we're going to harden our schools. We should be talking about hardening our schools. We have $9.6 billion in the, in, the, uh, in the, not just rainy day fund, but in the reserves, and we should be using that to harden our schools. Rocky, the issue, the issue that she brought up that a lot of people agree with is that the people of the city of Oxford had a right to have a seat at the table in front of lawmakers. Absolutely, and, they did. But they weren't given that they were not given that right. And there was a lot of Republicans on the other side. Because they wanted to talk no, about gun control. We're, 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 no, they, we didn't get a seat at the table. Did those kids' parents deserve a seat at the table to have a hearing? Sure. Why didn't and they, they get never it? got it. But again, they talked and about gun rights. we're still talking. And we're, we just keep talking and talking <laughs> and talking. What the governor's calling for is action. And I'm so disappointed in you right now, Rocky, to hear you call for more just blab no on not blab I'm, I'm asking for hardening dying. our schools are you kidding me then harden the are schools not a single one of these laws saying? not a single it's one of these laws wait a minute guys not Come a single there were 46 Save different storage. gun laws you Safe storage have, that law was broken in oxford there, that is the law not have guys prosecuted charlie charlie the extreme risk protection prosecuted after keeps guns out of dangerous hands they have it in florida they have it in indiana and the governor is saying we should have it here in michigan what's wrong with that nothing's wrong with that we should have that right there 
And I think what the governor makes a point, remember when she was looking at that clip, she was looking right at the Republicans. Reasonable gun law. I gotta take away your Wait a minute, Charlie. Hold on a second. You can still go hunting. You can still shoot. You can still do all those things. It's not the issue. I think your viewers should really listen to everything that Rocky is saying because it's proof of why Democrats now run the House, the Senate, and we got no, our government they, because by a they few, don't by make slim any majority. Sense. No, they do. These hardening our schools, no hardening our schools, hardening, making sure hardening, hardening our schools. Hardening schools you put a lot of money. What is that? Rocky. We have nine point two billion dollars. How much is a life worth? But let me ask you our this: Our kids deserve better. How much better. is a life worth? Then why not enact a, 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 an extreme risk protection order? How is that going to save Indiana? Have, how is that going to save a life? Guns out of dangerous it does? people's hands. It does. It's proven in Florida and Indiana. Forty that too. Group forty six different laws were broken in Oxford. 46 different laws. How did those laws protect those four kids? You know, I'm, I'm a bit obviously angry about this because I want something to protect our kids. And when we talk about just guns, 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 that doesn't always protect our kids. Hardening our schools, making sure that we have peace officers in our schools, that will protect our schools. Rocky, and I th- I, I, uh, people schools. agree that the, that the school needs to be protected, but the, the kids at Oxford actually stood up and had a news conference in which they said, I wish we had a seat at the table and this particular legislature did not want to have it. That's and, not okay. And you know what? In this when we country. talk about, when would you we agree ta- with that? I agree with that. That I agree with. But when you talk politically, also, you've got a lot of Democrats that are up there in Lansing that were endorsed by the NRA that were endorsed by the NRA, and they are going to be taking yeah. tough votes. And I want to see how they vote. I want to see how the Republicans vote. I want to see how we everybody only, votes. We only have three minutes left. I have to get to this other topic here. Governor Whitmer also wanting to move our state's economy forward, touting the new chip makers and the battery plants in our state, saying it's brought in $13.5 billion. It's a lot of money. She talked about how to take that progress even further. Take a listen. Let's keep funding the bipartisan Michigan Achievement Scholarship, which lowers the cost of higher education, community college, private, public, university, by thousands of dollars for most students and makes college tuition free for 65% of graduating seniors. Let's find apprenticeships and initiatives that are putting nearly 200,000 Michiganders on tuition-free paths to higher education or skills training, helping them land good paying union jobs. And to help even more people make it in Michigan, let's take steps to lower the age for the Michigan Reconnect from 25 to 21. It was interesting. We talked to a couple of Republicans who said that this is nothing more than corporate welfare when you're trying to attract business with the big three and say, hey, also get these these battery makers over here. But if it was a guy named Rick Snyder saying the same thing, many Republicans would agree. What do you think no, about what the governor it, it, said? It would, still be, it would still be corporate welfare one way or the other. The best way to attract business is do what Ireland did. You lower taxes across the board. You make your education better. You, you create more entertainment and more life that people move to this state. Because Michigan has a lot to offer. We just need to make it inviting. I, Alexis? I, I, go ahead. I just think that um, I'm glad that the governor is really thinking about people as she's speaking. I don't think she's talking about whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. She's thinking, are you somebody who's thinking about your future, your ch- children's future, yeah. educating your kids? And I think what she said last night really speaks to that, her commitment to Michigan family. So I've, I'm, I'm happy with what she's that, doing. That's, that's very good. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah. This is bipartisanship on this issue. Yeah. And, and also, uh, uh, pre- kindergarten as well. And I think that we can all agree and that if people can get a good education Selfridge. before they start formal schooling. I think that's going to be better for, for everyone. And I think there's some agreement on this. I, I agree. But remember, she vetoed reading for third graders and in, in improvement in pre-K because it wasn't just going to public schools. But now she's saying, look, we got to have this. Yeah. Let's, well, let's spend but money on As long as it goes to public schools, right. that's what she's saying. At the, at the end of the day, when you take a look at a yeah. state of the state address, this is nothing more than a blueprint. And, and for an incumbent, it's a progress report, right? And so when you hear what she's talking about, she's talking about what she did, not what, and, and also what she's going to do. What was missing in this state of the state address, Rocky? I, I think really, you know, Alexis keeps talking about reaching out to people. I think that's very naive. She's a very political animal. I think what was missing was truly understanding what Michigan really needs and what parents and what families and individuals what are really, really looking need? for. Economic development, better schools for our kids, more safety. 
Alexis, we have about 20 seconds. What do we need? What, what's missing? What do we need to talk about? I think that she's focused on it. those kitchen table issues that keep families up at night. That's what she's talking about, and that's what she's working on. All right, no room for a kumbaya here because yeah, uh, there still is. it's cold outside, <laughs> but it's is. hot here in the Let It Rip studio. Alexis Wiley, Rocky Rechkowski, Thank good you. to see both of you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Charlie and I are going to be back on the other side of the break, and we're going to be talking about a lack of funding that's taken a toll on our state roads. Now a new study suggests tolls could be the cheat code for fixing them. But is that an idea, Michiganders? Buy or sell? We'll discuss next. Welcome back to Let It Rip. It seems like every street we go down is littered with potholes and a huge campaign promise of the governor was to fix the damn roads. Now, a new study suggests tolls could be a good way to do it, but will Michiganders actually buy in? Business strategist Mark Lee and James David Dickinson from Michigan Capital Confidential are joining us today. And Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton, of course, with us as well as usual. All right, so here we go. Let's let it rip. Uh, let's fix the damn roads. Let's do $1 billion uh, that we can raise from toll money, like our friends in Ohio have done, and let's make this go away, this problem that we've been talking about for generations. Why not do it, James? Yeah, I'm wondering if, if maybe this is something uh, Gretchen Whitmer picked up when she visited Florida, this idea of toll roads. I think this is the one idea we could probably keep in Florida. If lawmakers really want a billion extra dollars, a good place to start is the billion dollars of pork projects they funded last year. Okay, so we have a, we we spent forty five billion dollars of money, state money, and about ten percent of that, four four billion dollars is going to be on the roads. So there's no shortage of road funding now. Sure, but Mark Lee, when you hear about already us paying the taxes that we're paying, uh, we all I mean I grew up here. We all are from here. You sit back and you go, all right, how much more do we have to pay for them to finally? fix the roads in a way that is sustainable. And do you think tolls could be the answer? Why don't you think that? Oh, no, I, I think tolls are the answer. I'm supportive of other tolls. I mean, look, all, over the years, we've heard about these budgets, we've heard about the dollars, we've heard about the taxes. Where the heck's the money going, quite frankly? And, and you know what? I, I think using a toll system is a better way of finally getting something done. I'm sick and tired of hitting. I had an issue with my car this week. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. driving up one of the expressways. I'm not going to say where. I end up in a dealership. I'm sick and tired of all these conversations about the budgets and fixing the roads. Let's just get it done. And you go to our neighboring states, and they have toll roads. Their roads are in much better conditions than ours. But are. here's the issue about the toll roads that many people have who are against them. And Charlie, when you take a look at the fact that, look, when you go travel, for instance, in Ohio, you're paying for the use of that road that you just were on, right? So you travel on that highway in Ohio, you paid for what you just drove on. But the way MDOT is talking about planning this is to instead say, hey, when you drive on a road, you're paying for all of the roads. Right. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. So I go to Ohio to get out of Ohio. I'm not, I'm just going to Ohio. <laughs> you're not alone. No, I have to I'm stuck because it's Ohio. Ohio, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, right. So Ohio's smart. They can tax people. But toll roads in Michigan, Michigan, we're not going anywhere but Michigan. So all of us are going to end up paying the toll roads. Now, those fancy electric cars, okay, they're not paying the gas yeah. tax, which supports, and I understand we're losing about $50 million. James probably did the math on it, but a significant amount of money. So I would say do a toll road, but tax the electric vehicles or, and, and the out-of-state drivers. They're there we go. That would level the playing field. James? Well, you could do that. You could uh, you know, tax energy companies and say, look, if you guys are going to be getting this windfall from having more EV customers, maybe contribute more to the roads. Uh, but, but again, I think the, the continuing answer, whether the problem is we have less fuel tax because of EVs, less fuel tax because of fuel efficiency, the answer to any of those problems is make the roads a budget priority. All right, well, let me ask you this. You, how do you increase funding without making taxpayers pay? This is not money that magically appears. You talk about the pork projects, but bottom line is Whitmer vetoed $375 million in road funding uh, in the past, and I believe it was 2019 where she basically said, hey, uh, let's have a proposal to, to raise the fuel tax by 45 cents. That didn't go anywhere. It did not. And she says, I'm not going to propose it again. No, no. What, what's going to work? I tell you, I, you know, I, this, this proposed, this uh, study so supposedly suggests that you get a billion dollars on an annualized basis, right? Yeah. Okay, so short term, somebody's got to come up with that funding. I get it. But once you start to get that billion dollar cash flow into the, the coffer, so to speak, I think that goes a long ways in solving the problem. Back to our neighboring states, you go to Illinois, you go to Pennsylvania, you go to Ohio, I know we try to leave Ohio, those rules are, those rules 
roads are much more smooth than what we have here. It's still embarrassing. I was driving back from Pennsylvania through Ohio on the turnpike. As soon as I hit the Michigan border, all of a sudden, what do I hit? Potholes. If I could, James did a study on this thing. So he's got these stats, these figures, and all that. He says the money's essentially already there in the budget, make it a budget priority. But if you take, a, I don't know if you need a billion dollars to fix the roads for the year, maintain the roads for the year, but where, what project would be cut? You take it out of prison, you take it out of mental health, you take it out of somewhere else. Where? If you think the money is there and we're not budgeting it properly, what gives? What's going to hurt to fix the roads? Well, just the, the state portion of the budget has grown, you know, 30% since 2019. You know, so we're looking at about 28 billion 2019, about 45 billion now. So the budget is itself growing. So there is money to take it out of. And I think, you know, there seems to be this appetite for a tax hike somehow. That already happened. So the 2015 plan under Governor Snyder, everyone was going to pay more fuel tax and increase registration fees. Here's the problem. It took a few years to phase in. So by the time it phased in, Governor Whitmer was in office asking for more money, and it just what seemed like EVs too much. Did that help? Did, did Governor Snyder's plan help because the money is has been phased in? It's in the coffers. It should be spent for that. It is in the Do coffers. Do you see an improvement? It is in the coffers. I mean, we spent about $2 billion, MDOT, just in state funds, a decade ago. We're at $4 billion right now. We, it was, what, 3.6 just uh, two or three years ago. So the, the numbers are going up, and we are, we are going to get to a point where we're fixing roads faster than they fall Mark, apart. I have to ask you this question, though, because it, it's easy for us to just say correlation and causation here. They have tools, their roads are better in Ohio. But is that the, re the only reason that you believe that the roads are better in Ohio because of the tolls? No, I mean, I think that they have a better job of, of, of fixing the roads. I mean, I was in Illinois not too long ago. Even on the toll roads, they were still fixing the roads, quite frankly. We have issues here with the trucks that have damaged the roads over the years. And I think we just have to figure out, James, you're absolutely spot on. We got to figure out how to make the roads a priority. The issue that I'm having is, you know, we're talking about budget cuts, and you're absolutely spot on, Charlie. What, what do we have to cut? The fact of the matter is that we get a billion dollars a year, eventually that Money comes on an ongoing basis. So we got to figure out how to effectively allocate the resources that we currently have, but longer term, take that billion dollars. But Charlie, the you've hit, literally hit the roads talking about this with people who've lost tires and rims, and you've yeah. talked to legislators about this. Is it the tolls or is it the stuff we're making the roads with in Michigan? And is it the weights that we allow to actually hit our roads? Well, I, think it's a, I think it's a combination of both, to be honest with you. I think we can make better roads, that's for sure. But look at the snow and all the snow plows. I mean, we do get winter, so we do have a destructive roads. But saying that, we should probably put more of a budget into there. I still want to think these EVs, though, because as, way, as I understand, part of the road budget comes from the gas tax. And these EVs, which everybody says is such a great idea, maybe they are, but it does take away money that's dedicated to the roads. So we have to at least $50 million, the number I got, we're losing just in EVs. And if we are going to go electric cars in the future, that's less money for the roads. So we have to make up that amount of money. And I don't I haven't gyrated all the numbers, but that is going to be an issue. Mark, the Democrats keep, uh, and, and, and you know, I talked to the, the governor one time about this, and she kind of resented the idea that I kept saying it was the Democrats who were for the, for, for the electric vehicles. But it's safe to say that if you look at this from a, a blue and red point of view, most Democrats are the ones pushing the electric cars. Is this too much too soon? Do you think that we're ready for this? Look at what we're talking about here. We're going to have to be ready for it. Times are changing very, very fast. We don't have time to wait. We are competing against other states. We have to move fast and furious and get this done. The last thing I will say very quickly from a business standpoint, if we have these damaging roads, it can hurt us in terms of recruiting new businesses into the state of Michigan. Do you think, James, by telling people, hey, we're starting a toll road program in the state of Michigan and roads start to improve, it would help attract more business and more people to come into the state? Tough to see how that happens. I, I, would, I would say if we just continue to play out the string right now with the current funding, which is $4 billion a year, that should be plenty. Is it working I'm hard out, pressed though? To, I'm hard pressed out, to though, think is life would be out? very different if it was $5 billion a year instead of four, because there's only so many crews, there's only so many workers. So let's just keep doing what we're doing 
and fix it gradually over time. There will never be a scenario, it could be 10 billion. There will never be a scenario where every road is fixed at once. Do you well, agree then that the working. governor is doing a good job because you're talking about the money that's yeah. being spent to do this? It was her campaign promise. Is she doing a good job? It was job? actually wise on her part because he, he, Charlie alluded to it earlier. In 2019, she rejected a way of increasing road funding without a tax increase. Kind of took her ball and went home. Last year, increases the road funding by 400 million without a tax increase. So not only can it be done without a tax increase, it was done without a tax increase. Well, we're gonna take a look at uh, some final thoughts on this one when we come back on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Final thoughts with James. Yeah, I, I think that Michigan is already on the right track with increased road funding. Uh, it's good that Governor Whitmer doesn't want to increase the fuel tax. It's good that she understands it can be done with the existing budget, and that's how it should be done going forward. Mark Lee, what, what needs to be done to move us forward? You know, the, the, with all the construction on 275 and, and 696, people are saying, hey, maybe something is getting done. I think it's a slow process. Uh, we have to start doing things differently because what been, we've been doing for the last several years is not working because the roads are still damaged. Bottom line is, I think it's a great idea idea for the governor and others to consider doing toll roads. Do something different creatively to get these roads fixed. Charlie, are we ready for toll roads in Michigan? I'm not. I don't want to pay any more money than I already do. But I'll tell you what, we did get some federal money. I know Mound Road is being repaired now, 75. So there are some roads now that are being repaired thanks to the feds. But I do think that there's going to be an issue with uh, uh, using less gas and these EVs. We have to make the playing field equal. We both drive on the same roads. Everyone should pay their fair share. I think it can be done, though. Mark Lee, if if you had to grade with one letter, the governor on fixing the roads, what would you give her? Uh, first couple of years, I give her a C. The last year, I give her a B. James? E for effort. No, no, I, 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 give, I, give, I give our governor a hard time. I'd give her a solid B. <laughs> James, good to see you, Mark. Thank you so much. Charlie, as usual, good to see you as well. That does it for this edition of Let It Rip.